For people that haven't heard of the labyrinth, it, it was one of the ancient wonders of the world. Like this was described by Herodotus and Pliny the Elder and Strabo and, and, and all these historical figures that saw it. Herodotus described it as exceeding in splendor and wonder that of the pyramids. Like this, this was a tremendous, the labyrinth was this sort of thousand room structure that was supposedly just absolutely magnificent. You could have fit all of the temples of Karnak and Luxor and all of the temples of Egypt into its footprint. That was just lost to the sands of time. It, we've never known where it is or what it is. And it would be like a, like a pyramid. It would rival the Great Pyramid for sure if, if we uh, were to find it. But it turns out we found it. nestled near the Fayum oasis, the Hawara pyramid site may appear unremarkable today, but to ancient historians it was a place of awe and grandeur. Herodotus, often called the father of history, described it in terms that still leave modern scholars in awe. He recounted that compared to the labyrinth he encountered, even the grandest Greek temples and pyramids paled in both effort and expense. It was a structure of such enormous scale and complexity that it surpassed even the famous pyramids of Egypt. For centuries, however, many dismissed his account as fanciful or exaggerated, especially given Herodotus' reputation for embellishment. However, as time passed, more of his descriptions have been vindicated, particularly regarding his accounts of Lake Morris near Hawara. He spoke of two pyramids rising nearly 93 meters above the surface of the water, each crowned with a seated stone statue. In the late 19th century, famed British archaeologist Flinders Petrie confirmed the presence of two seated colossi, each about 18 meters high and made of hard quartzite sandstone. This discovery was one of many that would lend credence to Herodotus's words. The site of the Hawara Pyramid holds far more than just these statues. When researchers began to investigate the pyramid itself, they unearthed evidence of remarkable ancient engineering. Despite its present appearance, a crumbling pile of dark mud, the pyramid conceals a megalithic core built with astounding precision. Beneath its decayed exterior, the masonry is of exceptional quality with blocks fitted so tightly that not even a blade could slip between them. This core represents two distinct types of ancient technologies. One, the megalithic stone core, and the other, a more fragile mud brick construction that has long since crumbled. Flinders Petrie, a pioneer in the study of ancient Egyptian architecture, was the first to delve into this mystery in detail. He noted that the stone casing of the pyramid had been removed during Roman times, leaving the interior exposed to the elements. Unlike other pyramids of the time, the entrance to this one was on the south side, not the north, and lay at ground level. It was designed with descending passages that had ramps on both sides, resembling a system for moving heavy cargo. This unique layout distinguished the Hawara Pyramid from others in Egypt leading Petri to believe that its original purpose may have been different from typical pyramids. One of the most astonishing aspects of the structure is its system of trap doors. Massive stone slabs weighing around 20 tons each, designed to seal off passageways. Petri discovered three such trap doors, all of which had been left open. His exploration of the pyramid led him to a central chamber carved from a single block of quartzite sandstone, forming a large tank-like structure in which a sarcophagus was placed. This colossal monolith, weighing over 110 tons, had been hewn with such precision, Petrie marveled at the technical skill required to carve and place such an enormous block of stone into a carefully excavated hollow. What truly puzzled Petrie, however, was the design of the tomb itself. There was no visible entrance, and the only way the pharaoh's body could have been placed inside would have been during the construction of the pyramid. Even more, curiously, no inscriptions were found inside the chamber or on the sarcophagus, a rarity for a royal tomb. Instead, 
Petri found only traces of charred bones, charcoal, and remnants of burnt diorite, suggesting that whatever had once been inside the sarcophagus had been deliberately destroyed by fire. The mystery deepened when Petri examined a second sarcophagus in the chamber, one that appeared to have been added after the pyramid's construction. This later addition was smaller and lacked the technical precision of the original sarcophagus, raising questions about the purpose and timeline of the additions to the tomb. It was as though the pyramid had been used for multiple, distinct purposes over time, each contributing to its enigmatic history. While Petri focused on the pyramid, he also uncovered evidence of a much larger structure nearby. The legendary labyrinth of Egypt, which had long been mentioned in ancient texts. Herodotus had described it as a massive complex of 3,000 rooms, arranged in a maze-like formation, some above ground and others below. He was forbidden from entering the underground chambers, as they were said to house the tombs of kings and sacred crocodiles. Yet what Herodotus saw above ground left him awestruck, and later historians would echo his astonishment. Strabo, a Greek geographer who visited the site centuries later, described the labyrinth's monolithic ceilings and walls, each constructed from enormous slabs of stone. When Petri began excavating the area in front of the Hawara Pyramid, he uncovered evidence of this labyrinth beneath the remains of a later village. Beneath the village, he found layers of stone chips and fragments, the remains of what had once been an enormous stone structure. He concluded that this was indeed the foundation of the fabled labyrinth. His findings aligned with the ancient accounts. The structure was so large that, as he noted, it could have contained the temples of Karnak and Luxor within its boundaries. However, the labyrinth had long since been destroyed, its stones quarried and repurposed by later generations. All that remained were the foundations and fragments, a ghost of the massive structure that had once stood there. And yet, despite the extensive damage, Petrie's findings suggested that this labyrinth had been far more than just a building. It was a monumental work of engineering and architecture that had once awed the ancient world. As we delve deeper into the mysteries of Hawara, it becomes clear that this site still holds secrets waiting to be uncovered. The labyrinth described by Herodotus, Strabo, and other classical writers may not be entirely lost. In fact, modern technology has revealed tantalizing clues that suggest much of it may still lie hidden beneath the sands, waiting to be rediscovered. In the 21st century, new technologies have allowed researchers to explore the Hawara site in ways that Petri could only have dreamed of. Ground-penetrating radar and other advanced tools have given archaeologists the ability to peer beneath the surface without disturbing the ancient ruins. One such expedition in 2008, led by the Mataja Project, a team of geophysicists, used radar technology to investigate the area beneath what Petri had identified as the foundation of the labyrinth. What they discovered was nothing short of remarkable, a vast network of walls and chambers buried deep beneath the surface. Their findings suggested that what Petrie had thought was a foundation might actually have been the roof of the labyrinth, which could still exist underground. The radar scans revealed a grid of rooms and passageways at depths of 8 to 12 meters, confirming the existence of a colossal structure that matched the descriptions given by ancient historians. Despite the significance of these findings, the news was met with unexpected resistance. Egypt's Supreme Council of Antiquities, led by Zahi Hawass, requested that the results be withheld from the public, citing concerns about national security. The Mataja team faced delays and obstacles, but after two years, they were finally able to publish their report. Their findings supported the ancient accounts of a labyrinth that was far larger than any temple known in Egypt, a structure that had remained hidden beneath the sands for millennia. The labyrinth's complexity and scale raised even more questions about its purpose. Why would such an enormous structure be built underground, and what was it used for? Some researchers speculated that it could have been a secret repository, 
a place where valuable artifacts or knowledge were stored. Others suggested that it might have served as a ceremonial or religious center, its labyrinthine corridors and chambers designed to disorient and awe those who entered. One of the most intriguing aspects of the labyrinth is its apparent age. The orientation of the structure, which is tilted by 20 to 25 degrees compared to the nearby Hawara pyramid, suggests that it may be much older than the pyramid itself. If this is true, it raises the possibility that the labyrinth predates the pharaohs and could be a relic of a much earlier civilization. Despite the advances in technology, many mysteries remain unsolved. The subterranean chambers have yet to be fully explored, and no one knows what lies within them. Could the labyrinth still contain treasures or texts from an ancient era? Could it hold clues to the origins of the Egyptians, or even earlier cultures that inhabited the region? For now, these questions remain unanswered, as the labyrinth remains buried beneath layers of earth and time. If you found this video fascinating, prepare to be even more intrigued. Check out our next video, diving deep into the enigma of Zawiyet el Aryan, the pit in Egypt that seemingly exists outside of recorded history. We'll explore its mysterious origins, the baffling precision of its construction, and the theories surrounding its purpose. Get ready to journey into a truly perplexing piece of ancient Egyptian history. You're looking at the limestone interior of the Abu Ruwash Pyramid, and this is the core. And we can descend into the core in this unique structure, unlike the other pyramids. Oh my God, what's this? Wow. Very deep pit. Uh, that, that, I, that looks to me like a boat pit. No way. Look at these lines. Look Seeing at these striations. Like exactly. Look at these striations. And also the higher parts and the lower parts shows that it's, it was exactly. not all cut at once. Exactly. It was yeah. like. Especially know, here. This. Here and here. Exactly. Yeah, here and there. Exactly. You can see where the blade came back. And we are talking about red granite from Aswan. How did they bring it up here? We are here in a, in a mountainous region. 